Give yourself some grace. You go on a family trip. Let's say you have three kids and you come back with two of them. <laughs> um, you know what? Your your percentage is pretty good. I mean, if you're playing baseball, that's like a Hall of Fame uh, statistic right there. Well, if you get two out of three hits. So if you lose one kid, you're still doing all right. You're still fine. Not, don't, don't beat yourself up too much about it. Not sure the analogy works here. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that we live in a society where perfection only puts stress on you. True. And I, it's overvalued. Uh -huh. So if you could just keep your percentages high of not losing people while you're on vacation, I think you're fine, which is what Mo is going to have to exercise here because he lost a friend on vacation. That, 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 that's hey, kind of true. Did you lose a friend or did a friend lose you? The friend lost me. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. And by me, I mean us. And it was, <laughs> it was seven of us on this trip. So the numbers are even better when you crunch yeah. the numbers oh. in this one. Yeah. yeah, six people were still there at the end of the at the end of the trip. I'm one just, was gone. I'm just trying to make you <laughs> look better and skirt accountability. So you're welcome. And I thank you, <laughs> Cassie. Quick math because you went to Emory and I went to San Diego State. Uh, if um, you said seven, so if six of the seven, seven come feet. back, what are, what's that percentage? Eighty five percent. That's fine. Which, See, yeah. Which yeah. full disclosure, I had to use Google Calculator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You did that really fast. Thanks. Yeah. Eighty five is fine. And in this case, there were no kids involved. These mm. are all. Fully, fully, full developed adults. Okay. So if you get lost, I feel like that is completely on you, but y'all may feel different after this story. <laughs> so we all go to Costa Rica to celebrate. Now, if Your you, lady's birthday, right? Right. How was it? It was great. It was awesome. It was an amazing weekend. I actually want to go back to Costa Rica really bad. What'd you get her? Uh, well, the trip was a huge part of it. Did that, you pay for her portion of the trip? Yes. Wow. I had to get her something else? No. <laughs> no, <that's funny. laughs> okay. no. I thought like I thought she decided this is where she wants to go, so she, you know, she 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 paid her way, but you 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 paid for your lady to go across. Yeah, it's a birthday. Uh, huh. okay. Is it ever the other way around? Uh, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm shocked by the shock. Do people split that kind of thing? I mean, I well, in the past when we've done like when I I did like my 40th in the Grand Caymans, um we we got the house for everybody. Okay. Really? Yeah. I'm about to ask her for half. She got it good. <laughs> but no, yeah, so we all were celebrating, and if you've never been to Costa Rica, it's, um, it, there's a lot of roads. Like, there's a lot of driving, there's a lot of roads, <laughs> and you can easily get lost. And one of the things I love about Costa Rica that I've never experienced is um, the freedom that you have with ATVs. You can rent your own ATV. You can travel around with ATVs or golf carts. You don't have to do Uber all of the time. And that was one of the best parts of the trip. If you've never been to Costa Rica before, there is something really special about that country. They call it Pura Vida, where it's the pure life, right? And even though there are a ton of tourists that go down there, mostly they have maintained like this really beautiful spirit of the whole country where you just sort of feel bohemian while you're down there and free while you're down there. So a lot of the roads that Mo is talking about aren't very well marked. No. And which makes it kind of awesome. Yes, right? it does. Yes. And, and unless you get lost. That is the only thing. So we did this ATV tour, which was like the best ATV tour I've ever done because all of the ATV tours I've done have been like you're in the same area. You're kind of just going around in circles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's cool. But this one was different because you're actually driving to all of the locations that you're going. So you're, you're in the street and then you're going back into these dirt paths and then you got the river on one side of you. It's amazing. So the guy tells us from the very beginning, he's like, all right, we have to be strict about this because it's really easy to get lost. And there's seven of us. And he's like, obviously, y'all are going to all be behind me. So if you're like the last one or the last two, it's even more important that you pay attention to all of the turns and everything that we're doing. Oh, man, they, the tour guide didn't have another tour guide like pulling up the rear. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's always the safe one. Yeah. Right. Where you're wedged in between two. That's how it should have <laughs> yes. been. So, no, not in this case. And he's on like this really cool motorbike and the rest of us are on ATVs like right behind. Them. So obviously you're supposed to signal and then each person signals and that's how you make sure that everybody is good with what we're doing. And the people in the back, I was third. So I can't, I don't know what's going on with six and seven. That's not my business. I'm one, two, three, everything behind me. That's somebody else's business. Right? So we're driving and at first, we, you know, we're cool. We end up going to like a beach and then we, get, we, we have a couple drinks. And in my mind, I'm like, should we, should we have had a drink? Because we kind of really are driving these ATVs. Like, we're actually in the streets with cars and stuff. But I don't think anything of it. <laughs> Fine, right? We're driving. And then at some point, I, I see my guy kind of pulling up on the left side of me. 
And he's not supposed to do that. The guy made very clear instructions to like stay in the lane, but he's like feeling himself. I, I can I can see it. He's revving the engine. Is he, he was scared to even get on the ATV at first. Now he's feeling himself. He's revving the engine. He's pulling up, and I'm looking at him like, "What are you doing? We're not supposed to be racing." Not the but, Papa Wheelie. But yes, he's having the time of his life. So I'm like, whatever. So then we keep driving, and he kind of goes back into the back, and then immediately I see the tour guide turn, and then he turns again. And then he just makes a Yui and starts zooming to the back. So as soon as he does that, I'm like, it's my guy. I know it is. Um. I just know it is. So I turn around and try to figure out what's going on. And everybody is kind of trying to pull it up now to each other to figure it all out. And they're like, um, yeah, we lost key. We don't know where he is. (gasps) So I'm like, for how long? They're like, yeah, we don't know. So I'm like, we've been driving all this time. And we, now, mind you, again, this is not like we have made a lot of turns. We're zigzagging. We're really driving through like, Costa Rica. You're like in the jungle of Costa Rica. Yes. And nobody knows the last time they saw him. Oh. So he's like, the guy's like, everyone stay here. And he zooms off. So he comes back in about um, maybe I would say three, three minutes, three to four minutes. And he's like, um, yeah, I, I didn't find him. So y'all stay here. And then we're going to go look. And so we literally are st- sitting there. We cannot find this man at all for at least 10 minutes. We have no idea where he is, where he ended up, where he went. So we're just kind of standing in this like jungle looking at monkeys just swing from the trees, <laughs> like just waiting to see if he's ever going to make it back. And then finally, after about 20 minutes, he finds him and he's back. And apparently he was like, um, I don't know what he was doing, but it stalled out. And he was trying to yell to everyone ah, that okay. I, I stalled out. Mm. But he had, like, face coverings on. And he was like... Well, yeah, if you're pulling up the rear, you got everybody's dirt coming back up in your right. face. So he, like, he went extra with it. Yeah. I mean, he really, like... <laughs> it was ridiculous. He was, like, mummified. Yes, exactly. So no one could hear him. So he stalls out and just decides to get out. So the guy's, like, when he pulled up to go get him... He's in like a bar, just like. Just, <laughs> it took him so long. Yes. He pulled over on the ATV and just went and just started hanging out with the locals. <laughs> like, we're sitting there panicking, thinking we're never going to see him again. Meanwhile, no, he was just chilling in the bar waiting for someone to find him. <laughs> hey, your percentage was still high, man. It was high. It was still one person. It was fine. And we found him. You got to remember also, when you are in different countries, if you've never been, when you do these kind of things, they're not nearly as safe. You don't have to sign like 130 waivers like you do in the United States of America. Generally, it's like one waiver or they'll just be like, just go ahead. You're good. Like as, as an American, I've asked before, like, is there anything for me to sign? They're like, no, just get on the <laughs> That's exactly what it because is. Because our country is so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. When I did paragliding in Brazil, I thought there was going to be like a Bible of waivers. You said like, no, we got you, man. Yeah, I don't think I signed anything. Not one thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Burt Show.